I'm a tall BMX rider, and it looks kind of ridiculous when I'm riding my bike. You might be a tall BMX rider, or you might be a short BMX rider. Either way, there are different geometries and different frame sizes that you're going to need to look at when you're upgrading your bike. And in this video, I'm going to break down what a long chain stay does for your riding and what a short chain stay does for your riding. Ultimately, it's a preference thing. If you buy a long chain stay or a short chain stay, that's totally up to you. I just want you to understand how each length is going to affect your style and how it's going to contribute to your riding. So I'm going to break it down in this video. Let's get right into it. Okay, Tom Brittany says, what chainstay do you ride as a tall guy? I don't know whether to switch up frame. Okay, so this is more of a subjective question. It depends on a lot of different things. So if you're looking to figure out what chainstay is right for you, you're going to need to consider these things. Personally, I ride, I think a 13.25 is my favorite. Um, the, the dark wave below me is a little bit longer and I liked it, but not, not a whole lot. So I stay close to 13, just a little bit over 13 and I'm six foot four. If you're six foot two, you might enjoy that same thing, but here's the thing. It's different for everybody. Depending on the style of riding and what you like to do, the chainstay length that you ride is gonna be different. And the best thing you can do is play with it. Uh, so, so I'll explain how the different chainstay lengths kind of affect you and affect your style. Uh, and then, then I'll explain what you need to do to test these things out. So for example, a short chainstay brings the back wheel closer to the front wheel. This is gonna give you a short wheelbase and it's gonna make the bike feel really snappy and really controlled. If you think about, oh, it's so hard to find something to use as an example, but if you think about having your back wheel here and your front wheel here, this leverage to get that front wheel up is gonna be different than if your front wheel is all the way out here. This is a long wheelbase. And so getting that front wheel up requires a lot more leverage, requires a lot more weight shift, and it's a lot harder to do. So when you have a short chain stay and a shorter wheelbase, you can lean back a little bit and that front wheel pops up really easily. So for a big rider on a short chain stay, I hardly have to sit down and my front wheel automatically pops up. If you look at someone who's like 410 and 110 pounds, they have to go like this and yank back really hard just to get the front wheel up on a longer chain stay. And so that's kind of important to notice. Like, are you planning to do a lot of manuals and pulling the front wheel up a lot? Or do you want your front wheel to stay on the ground? Think about it in this context. If you're jumping dirt jumps and you land a little bit heavy on a, on a dirt jump, you're landing a little back tire heavy. If you have a shorter chain stay and a shorter wheelbase, it's gonna be very easy to loop out on that dirt jump. If you have a longer wheelbase and you land a little back tire heavy, you're not going to loop out as easily. So that front tire is more likely to set down and you're going to be good to go. Looping out on dirt jumps sucks and chain stay has a huge effect on that. It just makes the bike feel more stable overall. It's going to make it feel more controlled if it's longer. So that shorter chain stay not only makes it easier to lift the front wheel up, it makes it easier to loop out. It also makes it easier to spin because that shorter wheelbase, again, very snappy and very responsive. So for technical park riders, if we look at, um, let's look at a total frame because they're just, they're known for that. Let's look at total Killaby frame. I don't know, man, I think total's about to go out of business. They're not doing so good, it seems like. But back in the day, I love total. Okay, so let's look at it. this 20 points. I had this frame at one point, not this color, it was chrome. 20.7 inch frame. Look at this chain stay, okay? Chain stay length on the K4, 12.65 to 12.95. So if you ride it uh, slammed, it's at 12.6 inches. That's incredibly responsive, that's insane. And if you look at something like the, um, uh, well, I'm gonna guess, I don't know off the top of my head, oh, we don't have the, the Corey Walsh frame. Hold on, let's just look at frames. The, Col the Corey Walsh frame is gonna be really responsive. Um, but hold on, let's just pull up frames and I'll show you what I mean. And, and oh, so where I'm going with about the Killaby frame is if you look at Kyle Baldock and Kyle Baldock's riding style, insane spins, lots of fast whips and that technical responsive riding. So this shorter chain stay is gonna match exactly what he wants the bike to do. He's gonna have a snappy, responsive bike that can do crazy spinny tricks, okay? And if you get something a little bit different, like the Chaos Machine, for example, 
Okay, $425, this is designed as a trail frame. It's designed for dirt jumps. It's not designed for triple tail whips and 720s. It's got 14 to 14.75, optimized for 14.1, 14.35, and 14.7. So look at that, huge difference. The, the shortest this chain goes is 14 inches, where the longest this other chain goes is close to 13. Uh, or the, you know, the longest you can get that chain stay. And so these are just drastic differences and it's because of what they're designed for. So I mentioned what the short chain stay is gonna do, the long chain stay is gonna be very similar, or, you know, or very opposite. The long chain stay is gonna give you the ability to stay stable and to stay controlled. And so if you're going 20 miles an hour on a short wheelbase bike, you're gonna feel like this. It's just gonna feel very unpredictable and not very stable. If you're going 20 miles an hour on a longer chain stay bike, for even a mountain bike, like that, that drastically changes things because the bike is more stable. And so what you need to think about while you're considering a, a chain stay upgrade is what you want to do with your riding. Do you plan to ride like Kyle Baldock and do these responsive tricks? Do you plan to ride like Corey Walsh or a trail god and do these more mellow trail tricks, lots of turn downs and floaty airs, dovey style riding? Or do you see yourself somewhere in the middle? And when you visualize that, it's gonna be a lot easier to select the right chain stay for you. And so after you kind of figure that out, the next thing you need to do is start somewhere. You start on a 13 inch chain, whatever chain stay you have right now, that's your base point. And from there, you can look at how that bike feels for you and how it's giving you what you want out of the frame. If you're riding this bike and you're like, you know, it's pretty responsive and that's not really my style. Now you know to get a longer chain stay. If you're riding it and you're like, God, it just feels like impossible to get my front wheel up and I hate that. Now you know your next frame is going to be with a shorter chain stay. So think about all of those things. Think about what you want to get out of the bike. Now you understand how it's going to affect, how, how your chain stay length is going to affect your riding. And you're going to be able to make a smarter decision.